Well, good evening, Generation Impact. I'm so excited to be with you this evening. I trust that you're ready to get into God's Word. So let's just pray as we come online. Father, we thank you, Lord, for a supernatural flow of your Spirit tonight. I pray for a spirit of revelation, understanding and knowledge to flow in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that as we know the truth, the truth is going to set us free in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, folks, we're busy with our golden chapters. And as I said, um, we take each of the chapters that I think are important uh, for you as a Christian to know what that chapter is about. All right. And so tonight we are going to deal with the book of James. We're dealing with James chapter one and James chapter one deals with the topic overcoming trials and tribulations, overcoming trials and tribulations. Now, this is going to be something that you're going to thoroughly enjoy but it's imperative that you understand this and get the essence and the teaching that, um, that James is busy writing about, okay? So that we get the truth. Because very often, a lot of people make decisions or assumptions that are not biblical. We're going to deal with it tonight, and when I get to them, I will highlight them as we go along. Okay, so James is one of the oldest books in the New Testament, first of all. All right, he was one of the guys who were first uh, to write um, straight after Jesus' resurrection and ascension. And so he really got going with this thing. So it was written to Jewish Christians, and it was written the, to the 12 tribes that were living amongst the Gentiles. Okay, you can pick that up in verse 1. Okay, so the Jews were finding it difficult to understand the message of grace that Paul was teaching. So they were struggling with this message of grace that you don't have to work for your salvation. Remember this, this was not long after Jesus had died. And so they were in this custom of that we go and we work hard and we keep our lives right and God will not kill us. Now Paul comes, he says, it's got nothing to do with this. You don't have to go and sacrifice an animal every year. You don't have to go through all the rituals and all of the command, uh, all of the uh, uh, the festivals and all of the laws that they had to keep. It is by God's grace. And so they really uh, struggled with this. And James writes this letter to help them understand. Because they understand the law and they understand its requirements. Living by grace is a very strange concept to them. That we live because of what Jesus Christ has paid for on the cross. And that's really something that is very strange uh, to the Jewish people, particularly those that were close, okay, to Jesus' ascension, that time frame, because as time progressed, they started to catch this a lot better. Okay, so now when we come to the book of James, so verse 1, it is addressed to these um, Jews that are struggling with this concept. And so we need to come with a premise and understanding that you need faith to overcome. Hebrews eleven six 6 says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And so we need to have faith if we're going to overcome anything. We need to believe God and trust God if we're going to do it. And so now we are going to start getting into some of the trials that Christians are going to face. All right. Now, why can't a joy when trials and tribulations come to us in verse 2 to 4 of chapter 1? And so, who gets excited about trials and tribulations? Who's going to sit down and go, well, this is a wonderful thing that just happened to me. I've gone through a rough time. You know, most of us are going to sit down and go, well, count me out on this thing. Okay, I'm not part of this thing. But I want to say to you that there is a reason for the trial. The reason for the tribulation. Okay, because it produces a few things. Number one, it's going to produce endurance. All right, you have to experience things. Okay, Galatians 5.22 has got the fruit of the Spirit. And so you're going to have to go through some things and you're going to have to have the Holy Spirit help you through this. And I want to say this, and let's just make it very simple. If I don't have pressure, I'm not going to pray as hard as I do when I have pressure. All right, when things are going well, we just sit down and just do what we want to do. And we just carry on living our lives and having fun. But very few of us are enduring even when it's going well. Very few of us are pushing in 
even though it's going well and there's no pressure, everything's looking hunky-dory, we back off, we relax, we take a holiday. And so God wants us not to be in that position. He wants us to be ready in and out of season. And so one of the things that trials and tribulations does, it brings us to the place of constantly believing God, constantly pushing in with God. And we're going to see some of the biggest miracles because of it. But what these trials and tribulations produce is that it leads to maturity and to perfection. In John 3.30, it says that, you know, Jesus must be more, he must increase, we must decrease. Colossians 1.27. And so I want you to see that there is a maturity that comes when we are under pressure. All right, we've, we've got the sparring partner of this trial or whatever issue. And so I want to just say this, interject quick. And say this, every single believer will have a trial or tribulation coming their way. The Bible says in Ephesians, when the evil day comes to your house, not if. So you are going to have an evil day visit you in some form or manner. Now we've had many of them visit our house. No matter how much we trust God, no matter how much we believe God, we end up in situations that... Um, you just sit down and go, God, how did we do this? Now, please do not be naive to think that no evil day is going to come because you have the authority of Christ. The authority of Christ is for you to overcome the evil day. All right. God allows these things to happen to us. He does not bring them. I want to make this very clear. Only Satan brings them. But God allows them. You know, there's times when, when uh, Jesus is even praying. And he says, Satan, about Peter, and he says, look, Satan wants to come and batter you, all right? But I've been praying for you that you'll survive this. Um, uh, if you take Paul's life and Peter's life, or take Paul, you go look at all the things that he went through, the shipwrecks, the beatings, the imprisonments, all the things that he did. Um, I want to ask the question, because if we had done that to today's society, to today's Christians, we would have said that he's got sin in his life. There's something wrong. He needs to go for deliverance. But I want to tell you that this builds character. It builds endurance. I want to tell you right now, and I can vouch for it. It's not fun when you're going through the trial. Okay? It's not fun at all. When you're facing that, that uh, opposition, and you're going through these battles, and you're trying to learn principles, and say, God, help me. Let me get this understanding. Let me get this thing so I can get through this. It is no ways fun. But I want to say something. That when you get through it, it starts developing you to the level that you can handle a lot more than you ever thought it was possible. You are able to endure. You are able to face things. You know, now when things come, it's a lot easier for me to face certain things. And we've had all sorts of trials that, was, that have been thrown our way. But we can get through them. Okay, and so it leads to a maturity and a perfection. All right, it let uh, let it be a thorough work in you. Philippians chapter two verse thirteen says, "Let these trials and that be a thorough work. Let it work what it needs to work in you." In other words, not that you are going to fall apart, not that you are going to sit down and fail, but it's going to develop patience. It's going to develop faith. It's going to develop endurance. It's going to develop stickability. And you ultimately are going to end up like the wise man who built his house upon the rock. That when the trials in life comes, you are still standing after everything has been thrown at you. You know, people have asked me, um, what is your biggest testimony? What is the biggest thing that has happened in your life? I want to tell you it's a very simple thing. I'm still here. That is the major testimony that I have. That no matter what has been thrown against us as a family, we are still here. And that we all love the Lord. And so these trials and tribulations have come. And they are going to hit us. All right? The Bible is very clear that if you're a Christian, trouble will come. It's not even a question. It's not a debate. The question is, what are you going to do when it does come? Now, we cannot be tested or tried beyond what you can handle. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 says this, that that tribulation that's coming, that test that's coming on your life, 
will not be more than what you can bear. Now I want to be honest. There are many times when I was in the intensity of the battles, and when I say this, I haven't had just one trial. It's been waves of trials through our life. I want to say this, that there have been times when I thought I wasn't going to make it. There have been times when I thought I'm not going to get through this. I don't have the strength. I don't have the revelation. I don't have the endurance to push through this particular battle. But guess what? We did. We came through. At some stages, it was literally, God, let me just wake up in the day. Give me the strength for today. Let me just get through this. I will cope with whatever comes. God, I pray that you're going to help me so that I can cope through these things. And I want to say this, that we did do it. Okay? We came through it. As for me and my house, we are here. Now, the Bible says that we need to fight the good fight of faith. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. And so when these trials come, you need to understand now it's a faith battle. Now I need to build my faith. I need to start calling on God. I need to start pushing on, on what God has taught us. And we need to start pushing these principles through and through and through and through. All right. Until you see the victory. And so we need to let the whole life cycle be complete according to verse 4 of James. There's a life cycle. And you need to let this thing go through. You will go through the fire, but you will not smell the smoke. You will be thrown in the furnace, but it will not destroy you. You'll be thrown in the lion's den, but you will overcome. You'll be put in front of Goliath, but you will overcome. I want to say something. Do not ever get the perception or the deception that Christian lives are easy. All right, that's a lie. It is difficult if you really want to serve the Lord to lay your life down and to do what he's asking you to do. Because you won't get through it with the power of God, with the anointing of God, with the ability of God, with the, with the call of God on your life. You will get through it, but it's not going to be easy. Okay, you are going to go through this and you are going to see a miracle take place in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. So the next point, you need to strive for perfection. It means that you're going to lack nothing once you pass this. Once you have passed this test, once you have got through this encounter, you are going to lack for nothing. Why? Because you're going to understand how to push in on faith. You are going to understand how to hold on to God's word no matter what's coming against you. You are going to stand and you're going to stand solid and secure. And the blessing of the Lord is going to be upon you. Matthew 5, 48 and Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. I want you to understand that God is going to do something supernatural for you if you allow the Spirit of God into your life. Okay? And allow God to get you through the battle and get you through the process. Because the process is going to develop you. The process is going to school you. I want to just say this. It's exactly the same as when you go to the military and you go to basics. If you ask anybody who really did basics and they did proper basics, they're going to say it was the worst thing that they ever did in their lives, but they're thankful that they went through it. Why? Because it matures you. It grows you up. All right. You start getting to a level of understanding and maturity after you've gone through the battle. But while you are going through it, you feel like you're going to die. You feel like, yes, I'm not going to get through this. But I want to say to you, in the mighty name of Jesus, every single one of us will get through this. And we'll get through it strong in Jesus' name. Amen? Now, if you do not know how to handle the trials, verse 5 to 8 of James 1, James says, we need to ask for wisdom. If you are in the trial and you don't know what to do, Okay, and I want to just say that sometimes I, I end up in that situation. I'm in a trial. And don't think that things are just hunky-dory for us all the time. I want to tell you that there's always challenges. There's always trials. God is testing our faith. 
and he's pushing us into new levels. And so we need to ask wisdom. All right. Faith and wisdom always work together. Faith and wisdom always work together. In verse 6. So I need to trust God, but I also need to ask what to do next. What do I physically do next? And sometimes the answer is nothing. Don't do anything. Believe God and keep your mouth shut. And believe that God is going to not only bring you through this, but that God is going to show you how to get through this battle. And sometimes you need to just keep quiet, not try and defend yourself, not try and do anything. And you need to stick to what God's word says and what God shows you what to do next. You see, godly wisdom is what to do next. And so we will always see wisdom and faith running together, Colossians 3.16. You need to recognize this opportunity. You need to discern it, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. What am I discerning? What, well, how is this an opportunity? It's an opportunity for me to go into a new level. It's an opportunity for me to learn how to overcome something new in my life. It's an opportunity for me to get a revelation of what who God is and what He wants me to do. I want to tell you right now, there's so many people that sit down and wish that they could just, um, you know, have the wisdom or the insight that we have. I want to tell you that comes with battles and trials. We did not learn that out of a classroom. We learned that in battle. We learned that in trials. We learned that in tribulations. And we said, God, give us the solution for this. We have to get out of this. We have to survive and we have to keep our family intact. And that's where it comes from. Now, God, most of the time, gives instructions as answers to our prayers. He'll give you, you're asking God for, for answers, and He'll give you an instruction on what to do. John chapter 21, verse 6, and John chapter 9, verse 7 are examples. And so I want you to see that God is going to show you how to get out of this. But if you look at it, it does not mean that every battle is dealt with the same. Right? There are times when God will say to you, I want you to keep quiet, not say a word. Other times he'll tell you to stand up and be solidly known in what your stand is. And so there are times that we need to hear what God wants for that situation. And you need to ask God, God, what is that instruction that you are giving me right now for this particular situation? All right? And God gives wisdom very liberally. He will tell you what to do next. I want to vouch for that. Every single time that we've been in a battle, I've known what the next step is. When I did not know, I went to God and God clearly gave me a word on what to do next. And then you need to ask, believing that this thing's going to come through in James 1.5. Now you need to receive this wisdom. Do not waver, do not doubt that it's going to work, even though it goes contrary to your mental uh, ability or capability or whatever's happening. Now, let me give you an example. I was wrongly accused of something, and there were allegations flying, and people were telling lies about me, and it was just one big mess. And I said, look, I need to go and clear the record. God clearly said to me, keep your mouth shut. Do not say a word. I said, but God, how on earth are they going to know the truth if I don't sit down and say this is actually what happened? God said, you stay out of it. You keep your mouth uh, quiet and you will see that I will vindicate you. I want to tell you today, every single person who was involved in that situation has come to repent and shifted and changed their whole perspective and whole view about everything. Okay. And so I want you to understand that God is going to take us through these processes to grow us up. Give us the opportunity to overcome. You can't overcome unless you've got an adversary. And Satan has been given that permission to release these things against you so that you can grow. Now he thinks he's going to get you. 
But let me tell you something, he's not going to get you. God is going to make a way of escape for you and you are going to be victorious. Now, for the Jewish Christians, they have to believe Christ is the Messiah. Okay? They had to believe that Christ is the Messiah. Remember that this was written to them going through tribulation and trials. And remember, many of them were being persecuted and killed for the gospel's sake. But they had to understand that those trials were there to make them stronger. And you'll see that as they grew, um, the power was with them. The, the miracles were in their lives. And so you'll see that as they grew, there was incredible miracles that took place. Because they were overcoming these trials and tribulations. Now, verse 9 to 11 deals with faith is the great equalizer. Okay? God is not impressed by what you achieve or what you have. He's not impressed about the stuff that you have. Or the accomplishments that you might have. You know, I've done this, I've accomplished this, and da 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 da. I want you to know that God is not impressed by that. God is only impressed by what you believe. Okay? By what you believe in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Now I want you to know this. God is impressed by what you believe. Is your faith in God? Is he your source? Is he your only source? The accomplishments can be done by faith. But God is not impressed by the accomplishments. He's impressed by the faith that got them there. The accomplishments is a second tier for God totally. What he's looking for is men and women that are going to stand and believe his word no matter what comes against them. And when the tribulations come and the trials come, that you apply God's word, you're pushing with God's word, you see the victory, and you bring a faith level so that you are solid and secure when everything is said and done. That you have a testimony. I'm still here. And I've got the breakthrough that I believe God for. I've overcome this thing. Look at everybody who has gone through a rough patch. All right? Take Joseph, every time he believed God, everything went wrong. Where did he end up? He ended up on the top of the pile. Look at Daniel. When he was finished, where did he end up? On top of the pile. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they're finished, they're on top of the pile. Job, when he was finished, on top of the pile. God raises you up, not because of the accomplishments, but because of your faith. And the more you endure, the more you stand, the more you stay solid. I want to tell you, God's going to raise you up. You will end up with the accomplishments. You will end up with all the stuff. See, people have looked at our lives and said, how have I managed to accomplish the stuff that we've done? Because I have stood in the midst of the trials. We are teaching you how to stand and how to grow in the things of God so that you can honestly, Stand up and do what God has called you to do. Blessed is the man who can stand against the trials, verse 12. And in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7 backs it up. Each trial becomes a test. Overcome it and you'll receive a crown of life. Each trial becomes a test. Pass the test and you'll receive the crown of life. God is looking for us to stand solid, to stand secure, but most of all is to pass these tests. And remember, no matter what's thrown against you is not more than what you can bear. Number two, there's always a way out. And number three, there's a reward at the end of it. Now, we need to understand temptations. From verse 13 to 16. Understand its source, that it's not from God. God does not come and tempt anybody. Even Jesus Christ, when he went into um, the desert to be tempted by who? 
the devil. All temptation, all trials and that come from the devil. Satan still wants to come kill, steal and destroy. And so worldly lusts from our, uh, from our flaws, it is evil. Okay? So in other words, it comes from the devil. It comes from our worldly lust that we wanted out of our own. And it's designed to drag you away from Christ to sin. And if not dealt with, will result in death. Wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23 And it's designed to draw you away. So that you will ultimately die to your destiny, purpose and even your salvation. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. All right, verse 17 to 21. You must understand that the good stuff comes from God. He does not want you to hurt, uh, to want you to hurt or to destroy you. In John 10, 9 to 10, Jesus Christ come to give life. He does not create bad things about good. Although he can use sinful men in Habakkuk, uh, Habakkuk, 1 chapter 5, uh, Epicac chapter 1, verse 5 to 11. In other words, God does not create bad things, but He will use evil men for His task. Okay, so there will be people that are evil that will come against you. It will help you grow up so that you are stronger. Okay, you need to watch your attitudes and what you say in the middle of the storm. When you are there, whether you're going to pass this test or not, it's going to be determined by what comes out of your mouth. Remember, you have the authority. Ephesians chapter 4, 26 and 29, and Galatians 5, verse 20. And anger never promotes righteousness in Ephesians 4, 31. In other words, if I get angry in the battle, I'm never going to do the right thing. I'm never going to get through it. Now, verse 22 to 25 deals with the next section. And that is this. We need to be doers of the word and not hearers only. So when the battle comes, we need to actively be doing the word and not just knowing what the word says. Okay? If you do not do what the Bible tells you to do, do not expect to receive what the Bible promises you're going to receive. You can only receive when you are actively doing what God's word says. Be obedient to the written and the spoken word of God. In 2 Timothy 3.16 and Proverbs 4.20-22. 20 you need to now actively apply the word of God in your battle and in your trial. And you are going to be successful. Your doing is what brings about the blessing. Very important. Verse 25. Your doing is going to bring about the blessing. Whether I apply what I know. And Matthew chapter 7, 24 to 27. And so once I've done all of this. And I've understood it. We end up what's called pure religion. The Bible calls it pure religion. Verse 26 and 27. Janine loves this section of the word. All right. It's not only what you believe, but the way you live your life. What you do. Heaven's expectation demonstrates God's love through good deeds and you keep yourself pure. Good deeds are considered pure religion. Keeping yourself pure is good, a pure religion. As so I want to summarize quickly, I need to understand that the, that the, the tribulations are going to come. I need to handle it with wisdom, ask God what to do, and with faith. I need to understand that it's not God doing this, all right, that it's the devil trying to come and steal. And that everything that is good and perfect comes from God. Everything that's bad comes from the devil, but God will use it. In the tribulation and trial, I need to be doers of the word. I need to apply it. And ultimately, I need to practice pure religion in doing good deeds. Because I've overcome. I now have the, the, the means, the resources. I get the victory. I get the spoils. I now need to practice proper administration and giving with what God has done with it. So let's pray. Lord, we come before you today. And Lord, I thank you for each and every believer. I thank you, Lord, that we will practice, 
Lord, our faith in every trial and tribulation. And Lord, we will celebrate your victory. We will celebrate your blessing over each one of our lives in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen.